Welcome back to Writing Done Right. Well, today we are going to do a tutorial on how to add indexes to your books using LibreOffice. All right, so an index is something you probably want to have in your book depending on your genre. In my case, I write mostly Christian, and so having a scripture index is a very important thing, particularly since I write stuff which is very heavy on those references. Obviously, nonfiction books, you generally have an index, but you could also have one if you're running fiction, particularly if you are really building your novel around a world and you really want to focus on the details of that world, then index might be a great thing for your book as well. A few other places where you might want to include it. And so with that in mind, we're going to talk about how to use LibreOffice to build an index for your book. Now there's two general ways to do this. One of these is by creating manual index entries and then populating the index from that. And the other way is by using a concordance file. Now, if you're just doing a few entries, maybe 10 or 20 or so entries, doing it manually is probably an okay thing. Anything more than that, you wanna build that concordance file, import that into your document, and then build your index from that. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna go over to the computer and we are going to show you how to build the index files and how to build the indexes manually. Okay, so over here on the computer, what we're going to do is we're going to add an index to this book, Hezekiah's Prayer. Now, this is a Christian book, and so we want to add a scripture index is what we want to do. And, uh, of course, I'll help out anybody with any type of book out there. I just happen to write in this genre. And uh, it does produce a simple and interesting challenge doing a Christian index because there's a lot of ways you can write the scripture words. There's actually a lot of ways you can organize an index. And so this makes a good case whether or not you you agree with the Christian life or not. So the first thing we want to do is I want to show you how you can just do a manual index entry. You'd want to do manual entries if you really only have just a couple things you like to index. So for me, this book here is about the King Hezekiah, who is an Old Testament king. And so what we're going to do here is we're just going to find an instance of the word Hezekiah. And with this highlighted, you can come on down to your insert and table of contents and index and hit index entry. Now in here, this chooses where it's going to go. I'm going to put it under alphabetical index because we're going to do a couple different things with this. The entry is the word Hezekiah. Now the keys will indicate where it is this sit in the individual index. I'm actually going to set Hezekiah in this. Uh, I not completely sure if this is required or not. Um, I use it, and the reason I use it is because if I'm doing like first key indicates basically an organization and then a suborganization. So I'm going to use first key for Old Testament and New Testament. If I wanted to say something like Old Testament and then organize or New Testament rather, and then organized by a gospel book or by a um, a Pauline epistle or a non-Pauline epistle, I could use the second entry key, and then what we have is we basically have a nested index. Okay, in this case, actually, I'm going to change this and write kings instead here. Uh, there might be a few other kings in the book, uh, if I can remember, and so we'll, maybe we'll just create a manual index of the kings, which there's really only a few instances of, and then I'll show you how to use a concordance file for a massive index, because you do not want to be doing this for 100 entries. Okay, but you can come over here and hit the button that says apply to all similar texts, and then you can match case, match whole words only. I like keeping this one unchecked because if I do match whole words only, any inst any instances of like Hezekiah apostrophe S would not show up. By keeping this unchecked, it's going to give us all instances. Same with the match case. Um, in this case, every instance of Hezekiah is going to be exactly like this. So match case is kind of irrelevant. But if I were using something that could be a lowercase uh, word in the middle of a sentence or a capital at the beginning of a sentence, I would definitely want to make sure match case is not turned on. So for the most part, I'm going to overall leave those unchecked. So let's go ahead and click our insert and close. So now what's going to happen is when we go to build our index, it's going to search through the whole thing. Now, what you'll notice here is that it went through and already highlighted all of the instances of Hezekiah in here. 
Now, I believe that there is another king called Sennacherib in here. Let's see if I can find Sennacherib, because he's another king. So we'll go ahead and highlight this guy. Table of contents, index entry. Again, uh, here's our entry under our keys. You call it kings. Go ahead and hit enter. Oop, I want to hit uh, apply to all similar texts. Insert. So now we have all instances of Sennacherib is there. Um, I believe we have, I think we have Sargon is in here, I think. There you go. Sargon is another king. So you can see that this is going to get a little bit annoying if you have to do it uh, manually for everything. And Beredic Baladin is actually another king. Even if there's more kings than this in the book, uh, we'll stop here. So just kind of give you an idea of what we're doing. Insert that. Close. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the bottom of the document where I already have the place set where this is going to sit under here under index. We're going to put your cursor where you want your index to be. And then under insert, we want to come down and hit your table of context index or bibliography. Pull this type down, call it alphabetical index, and then you might want to delete the title. In my case, I'm going to delete the title. The reason is I could title this scripture index and get rid of the one that's on the screen here. The problem, though, with doing this is that scripture index, the way it's in here right now, is a heading, and it will appear in my table of contents and in anything else that I'm doing to reference the structure and organization of the book. So I definitely want to keep that there. So I just leave the title on this blank. Now, I do like to de-check this Protect Against Manual Changes because there may be a few little odds and ends you want to go through and fix a few items here and there. Maybe you might move a few things around. Maybe you might delete an extra entry or just something. You might want to do something like that. So I like allowing me to make the edits. Now over here, if we go ahead, hit choose just an individual chapter or the entire document, we want to go with the entire document. So go ahead and hit OK, and then what it should do is it should go through, find all of the instances of all of these kings, and then it's going to insert them in an index under the subcategory of king. So we'll give it just a second to finish its work. Okay, so now we have its work. Now, you can see where this is here, where we might want to go ahead and make some edits to this. Uh, I don't, like, I can I can actually have the adjustment to say PP or not PP in there, which basically means if it just has a number, it's listed there once. If it has PP, it's listed on that page multiple times. I can always right-click and index and edit it, and you can see there's combine, and under our, it's one of these guys over here, I I think somewhere we have the option to uh, use or not use the PP option. Got a spot where that is. There we go. Combine identical entries with P or PP. So go ahead and hit OK. So now you can see when I don't do that, now it's going to give me double overs. There's all sorts of weird stuff. So obviously Hezekiah is a bad word to have in here because we just have so many different things in there. In fact, this is so many. 28, 32, 44, 46, 48, 52. There's so many edits in there. Let's go ahead. Um, since it's spreading across a variety of pages, we're going to go back and return that back on because that's a lot. Hit OK. So there you go. So that basically went 25 down through a variety of other pages. So that's a nice, uh, nicer uh, index there. You can see it says kings there. Here's a listing of our kings. We could do kingdoms if we wanted to. Now, the next thing, though, we can do is if you're going to be doing a lot of items, then you're going to want to create an index file. And so to create an index file, this is a file that is called a concordance file. And so it's .sdi extension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with just a spreadsheet. And in this case, this is what my spreadsheet is going to look like. So there is actually the, uh, the information that you can get about how to create this file uh, is I'll go ahead and link it in the description down there. But in short, what we see is we see a few different columns here. We see that my column D is blank and then E and F each say one. Okay, so column A. Uh, this guy here is what it's actually searching for in the document itself. You can see that what I end up doing is I end up doing 
the one of these for each chapter in the book, because I don't want it to search just Genesis. I want to search Genesis 14, Genesis 15, Genesis 16. So I'm going to create the index like this. So I went through and yeah, this took a little bit of time. And if you uh, do write in Christian um, and uh, you want this file, please just reach out to me. I will gladly pass this file on to you. It's, you know, Took me the time to do. I'll be gladly, gladly hand it on to anybody else. Okay, but what we're looking at here is column A is what's going to be searched in the document, and column B is what it's going to be uh, referenced in the index itself. So you can actually have it listed in the index. Why might you want to do that? Well, if I were to be inclined to write a lot with uh, your books like First Peter, Second uh, Peter, First John, Second John, Third John, I could actually write out Third John. And I can have it search for third John, but still listed in the index as one John. So the first one is the text it's actually finding in the document. The second one is how it's actually listing it in the index. Okay, column C, there is my, uh, this is my first key. If you remember the keys we we're talking about. So now I have all these guys in the Old Testament. And uh, it's going to give me uh, a listing of the Old Testament books, and then it's going to give me a listing of the New Testament books. So if you are doing something in either, maybe you're doing geography, and you wanted to mention individual locations within cities, within countries, you can list them by, here's all the cities in this country, here's all the cities in this country, here's all the cities in this country. And then you can have a separate index entry still dropping it into that individual city. Okay, so that's kind of what we're doing there. Now, D, I have D left blank uh, because, let me have a look at my notes here. Okay, so D is my uh, second key, which I'm not using second keys in this case, so I'm going to leave D completely blank. And then E and F, E is the match case. This is going to take a zero or a one. A zero is going to not match the case. A one is going to match your case. And then our word only, I want it to match my word only because I'm going to be doing, you know, Genesis 17 colon one through five. I don't want it to ignore it because there's a one colon. So if I do not match the case, then it's going to uh, give me different results than if I don't. And so that's why I have this set up this way. Now, once you have your spreadsheet set up, you're going to want to export it as a CSV file. So here in LibreOffice, we want to go ahead and hit our export as, or save as rather, and then come on down to our CSV. <clears throat> so down here, CSV. And since I already have a CSV, I'm going to go ahead and label this uh, Bible Concord 2.csv. It's going to give me a notice because I'm not saving in the default, so I'm going to say yes. Go ahead and use this. Now, I want to set my field delimiter. The SDI file specifically wants the semicolon. So go ahead and select the semicolon, and then go ahead and push your OK button, and now that will give us a uh, Concord 2.csv. So... Well, I don't want to open that one back up in the in that editor. Let's go ahead and open it back up in our text editor just so we can see what it looks like. All right, so again, this is what our file is going to look like. So that's exactly the format that we want. We have our search entry. We have our index entry, our first key, our second key is blank, and then a one on each of these indicating that we are... Uh, going to be uh, matching, what is it? False with a zero, true. Okay, they are matching the uh, matching the case and the matching the word only. Now that we have that, we simply uh, copy the file and go ahead and just literally change the extension to SDI file. Now, if you're on Windows, it's going to really yell at you. Also, if you are on Windows, you are going to want to, uh, in order to change the extension, you have to go into Control Panel, Folder Properties, Center Tab, about halfway down, there's an option to show your extensions for known file types, which, by the way, as a security precaution, you always want that enabled anyway. Even though it doesn't look as pretty, you do want your computer to show you the extensions because if somebody's trying to send you an email virus that says, you know, blah, 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 dot PDF, and if you have those extensions hidden, it might say dot exe, but since the computer knows what a dot exe file is, you don't know that it's an executable. That's why you always show those. So on Windows, if you're making this change, you have to go in and show the extension types for known file types. 
Otherwise, you will not be able to change the extension. So go ahead and do that. Just manually change the extension to SDI is the extension type. Again, this here should just open up in any word pad. You can see it looks the exact same way. So now that we have our SDI file, we're going to right click and edit the index. Now we're going to turn on this concordance file and we're going to hit an open button. This is uh, this was my old one. This is the one we just created. So let's go ahead and uh, add our newly created concordance file. Push OK, and now give it some time, and it's going through the whole document. It's going to give us a giant list. So here is our kings. Here is all of our New Testament references. Here is all of our Old Testament references. So there is how you add your indexes into an individual file. We'll go ahead and talk about how you can format these indexes on another uh, on another um, video here. To show you actually what I did, we're going to not save this file. And hopefully if I reopen this guy back up, unless I accidentally saved, I'll show you what my final product actually looks like here. So there you go. So you can see I'm using a nice two column format, just looks really nice in this. I probably have made a couple little adjustments and tweaks here and there. Uh, and so this is what uh, what this guy looks like. So I'll show you how to do this, this type of dual uh, column formatting another time. So thanks for coming along on this video and I hope that this helps you to get your writing done right.